Hashtag Ask Goji Man, what's usually the root cause of IBS, SIBO and other gut disorders? Great question, let's get to it, roll the titles. For the record, I'm done trying to make y'all comfortable. Right. For the record, you ain't trying to grow them stuff for you. Welcome back, it's good to see you all again. If you haven't met before, then hi, I'm Goji Man. I'm currently finishing a master's in nutrition and qualifying as a nutritionist. And later this year, I'm gonna be doing a PhD in nutritional science. I make vegan health and nutrition videos every single day unless I'm snowed with assignments in which I answer your health questions under the hashtag Ask Goji Man. So if you have a question for me, then hashtag Ask Goji Man in the comments below, or alternatively, you can send your video questions through to contact at gojimannutrition.com. So as always, just a quick reminder that you can do this SIBO, organic acids test and stool test via my website. So if you have any health or digestive problems, then consider taking these tests as they will provide a lot of very detailed information upon which you can start making informed decisions and regaining your health. And on that bombshell, to the question. So today I'm talking about the ileocecal valve and why it's so important for resolving IBS, SIBO, bloating, cramping and all other digestive problems. So as you can see from the diagram here, the ileocecal valve is a sphincter muscle that separates the small and large intestines. Now normally the valve is shut most of the time and it only opens when the food that you have eaten passes from the small to large intestines where it goes through further digestion and then eventually excretion. Now when your ileocecal valve works correctly and everything runs in harmony, your digestion will work swimmingly. Now the problems will usually start arising when the food that you eat rubs up against the valve and it becomes inflamed. And when this occurs, the small intestines can distend and a reflex can develop. So if the valve is stuck in a closed position, it can cause a feeling of tightness or cramping in the abdomen. Another problem when the ileocecal valve stays shut is that it can also cause constipation and it can also cause you to reabsorb toxins that are not moving from the small to large intestines. Equally, if your ileocecal valve remains open for extended periods of time, it can cause diarrhea and because the food is then allowed to travel too fast through your small intestines, it can cause malabsorption of nutrients. Also, another piece of the jigsaw for detecting these type of issues is regarding your bile. Most of your bile is absorbed at the end of your small intestines. So when you have too much bile entering the large intestines because of ileocecal issues or too much protein, then you can pick up these type of issues on comprehensive stool tests by looking at things like faecal fat. Now for people with SIBO, the ileocecal valve is often the biggest driver for the condition and is often the reason why relapse rates are so high. People often just throw antibacterials or antibiotics into the gut to fix the problem, which will obviously get rid of the bacteria, but then the bacteria will return very quickly because the valve is stuck open, allowing the bacteria from the large intestines up into the small intestines. So if we know that our ileocecal valve is a big driver for SIBO and gastrointestinal disorders, how do we actually recognize if we have a problem with our ileocecal valve? So there are a couple of telltale signs that your ileocecal valve is not functioning properly. So you could have pain under your ribs or to the right of your belly button. You could have mid or upper back pain in conjunction with your digestive issues. Now equally, this could be a gallbladder type issue, but it could also be related to your ileocecal valve. And all of these symptoms can be in conjunction with bloating, constipation or diarrhea, etc. So if we now recognize these symptoms from issues relating to the ileocecal valve, what causes them in the first place? Well, one of the first things that you need to understand is that the valve receives signals to open and shut from surrounding nerves. So when your gut is exposed to certain toxins such as herbicides and pesticides, then what's called your migrating motor complex becomes out of sync and it can directly impact your ileocecal valve. Now the migrating motor complex is just science jargon for the smooth muscle contractions that pull food through your intestines. There are also things like post-infection IBS that will directly affect the working capabilities of your ileocecal valve. Also, if you develop something like gastroenteritis and then develop post-infectious IBS, this will directly affect the ability of your ileocecal valve to open and close properly. One of the other common issues for triggering ileocecal valve issues is through a bout of food poisoning. So if you have developed IBS type issues after a bout of food poisoning, then it can often be the ileocecal valve that is compounding your issue. Now, another thing that we often look for and test like the comprehensive stool test are your levels of short chain fatty acids. So if you have low levels of short chain fatty acids, then this can affect the pH levels of your gut and also the speed and gut motility at which food travels through your intestines. Another massive piece of the jigsaw is bloating. If you are constantly bloated, it can cause the ileocecal valve to remain open and then allow the bacteria to further back up into your small intestines. 
That's why people with bloating, etc., where SIBO is not present, then go on to develop SIBO further down the line. So there are these and other issues such as stress that will cause your ileocecal valve to become faulty and then leave you susceptible to SIBO and many other gut disorders. So it's really important that when you have bloating etc you don't just leave it because it can affect your ileocecal valve which can then trigger things like SIBO which then can trigger malabsorption and leaky gut which then can develop into autoimmune type issues. So I really want you all to understand the importance of a healthy functioning ileocecal valve if you want to avoid gastrointestinal gut disorders. Now there are a number of things that can be done to get your ileocecal valve functioning properly such as ileocecal valve massage which is a technique that will help with the issue. You can also make dietary changes and take a couple of supplements to help fix the issue. But the most important point about this and all other gut issues is that you find out exactly what your problems are and you don't try and guess your way out of the problems. You take the SIBO test, the organic acids test and stool test and then you get a complete picture of the gut. So that's the end of today's video. I hope you all enjoyed. As always, remember to look after your body because it's the only place you have to live. And I'll see you next time.